Hey YouTube, you're watching the Enneagram Girl YouTube channel, um, which is an extension of a WordPress blog called Enneagram Girl, and that's enneagramgirl.wordpress.com. You may have read that blog, you may have not, but let me just give you a little bit of background on who I am and why I am starting a YouTube channel talking about the Enneagram. Um, my name's Erin, and I have been studying the Enneagram for about five years, um, and that's been completely independently. Um, it started with, um, I feel like as it does for many people who study the Enneagram, uh, with the wisdom of the Enneagram, and um, definitely read a couple other books from there. Claudio Naranjo is one of my favorites. Um, but after that, really just started this natural progression um, for me, which came out of that, of um, really studying people or um, observing people and just my interactions with them and um, just having a lot of different conversations with people in my life, um, with friends, with friends of friends, um, in regards to Enneagram, but also just filing away those observations. And over time, that gave way to this project, um, which is a photo and interview-based project, um, which you can actually check out at the Enneagram Girl blog if you're interested. Um, but that project is what really started the Enneagram Girl blog, um, and to support that project rather than just um, ejecting that photo project out into cyberspace, um, to frame it well and to really present the Enneagram um, well alongside it, uh, I started to put together some infographics on the basics of core type, but also um, of each instinctual variation of core type. And again, I did that really um, more just to, to support my project and to put that out there for anyone who might come across the project and, and not know what Enneagram was. Um, but over time, I've seen just from traffic um, that those infographics, I've just received a lot of feedback that that um, is something that um, people have gotten a lot out of um, too. So this YouTube channel is kind of going to be an extension of that blog, um, just in talking about um, kind of everyday thoughts that I have about the Enneagram. Um, that's really where the name Enneagram Girl came from to some extent, is that um, in my life, I think I, throughout my study, I started to gain this reputation just um, among my friends and family and um, the participants of my project and whatnot. Not that any of them called me Enneagram Girl, but um, in, in many ways I became like that Enneagram Girl. Um, because not only have I studied it, um, but I use the material of the Enneagram every day in my life. Um, and I really do think, honestly, that that's the intent of a, a tool like this. And of course, um, I think one of my other big passion areas when it comes to Enneagram is um, really being aware of the way we use it and not misusing it, which um, I feel like if you are no stranger to the Enneagram, you've observed this as well. And some of that can manifest as stereotyping or as um, misidentification or um, even sometimes just as making this tool, which is such a valuable tool, out to be um, like a fun quiz. <laughs> um, I tend to think of it as like the which Sailor Moon character are you most like syndrome, um, but where people treat the Enneagram like they don't even address the material, they don't go to read about it. Immediately it starts with a test, or, oh, I should take the test and find out what I am, smack themselves with a label, and then go on with their lives, none the wiser. So that's something that I really um, try to guard against in any situation where I'm in conversation about the Enneagram, or if I'm sitting down one-on-one -on -one with someone, helping them arrive at a type conclusion, whatever it is, um, I try to really always point back to the core of the Enneagram, which is motivations. Um, we don't uh, determine what someone's Enneagram type is by their behavior. We don't determine what our own um, tendencies are by behavior, but by asking ourselves why. Really recognizing that we can put up 
several Enneagram types next to each other um, and say, oh, they might all do this thing. They might all um, be afraid or respond in a way that reads as anxious, but for different reasons. So um, really returning to that motivational core is a, is a large passion of mine and, and something that I feel like um, you might call holy discontent um, in that it has come out of seeing that not happen um, and has come out of seeing this really great tool um, misused and a lot of times not maliciously but just from a place of, um, you know, in our culture really wanting that quick fix of understanding um, the hour-long class or the weekend seminar that is supposed to inject us with the amount of knowledge that will uh, be useful every day of our lives. And in truth, that's just not how it works. I say, um, I said in one post on um, Enneagram Girl that in the same way that there's no crying in baseball, there are no shortcuts in Enneagram study. That doesn't mean that it has to be dry. Um, far from it when we're talking about human beings and observing people and the differences between them. Um, but that truly I believe that to unlock the great potential of this tool in, in regards to self-observation and understanding our own um, motivations and sin patterns, but also in regards to understanding others well enough to um, not misjudge them. Uh, in order to unlock that tool, we really need to um, like any other learning area, commit to sort of lifelong studenthood. Um, I would say that anyone who's studied a topic to great length, um, whether it's history or um, philosophy or medicine, would tell you that they are continually learning. So that's really an important posture, I think, when it comes to studying these topics, which really the topics that we are studying through the Enneagram are identity, personality, psychology, um, I'm sure the list could go on, but these are heavy, meaty topics, and the Enneagram has a lot to offer, um, but it's something that we really need to be curious about. The best example that I have of, or that I have experience of that kind of teaching, that kind of teaching that really equips um, people to be lifelong learners, of the, in the Enneagram is um, through an organization that I love um, and in truth would like really love to work for eventually. Um, but I got to visit them this past summer um, in July and it's the Enneagram Prison Project. If you haven't checked them out, check out their website. It's enneagramprisonproject.org. They're doing really, really amazing work and amazing work that I can say now I've seen with my own eyes. I've been in their classroom environments and just seeing the way that they do exactly what I'm talking about, which is equipping their students to actually, actually apply this information to their lives. And, and not just while they're in the classroom, but when they leave and throughout their life. And the key to this is kind of what I've been talking about, which is time. I hope that um, that outlines a little bit for you who I am and what standpoint I'll be teaching the Enneagram from here. And uh, not even just teaching, but sharing. Um, I feel like the everyday inquisitive thoughts that I have on the topic. And really, I would love to hear from you too. So if you have questions or thoughts in regards to the Enneagram or an idea for a video that you'd like me to do, um, feel free to reach out at enneagramgirl at yahoo.com. Um, otherwise, I hope you will tune back in um, for my first video after the intro, which is this video. Um, which will be on the differences between 1 and 8, which may sound strange to you if you know Enneagram, because 1 and 8 is not a common misidentification, really. I mean, you have 1 and 3 you, more often, you have 1 and 6 quite a bit, you have 8 and 3 and 8 and 6, um, but 1 and 8, because they're both gut types, um, I just feel like it, so it came out of a conversation that I had with a friend of mine who um, is an Enneagram One, and she began asking that question of what are the differences there? Um, and we just had a really interesting conversation over it, so I decided to address it here. Um, so tune back in for that next time.